I think the secret of my success with observation of many of the faint fuzzies, nebulas and deep sky objects was that um, I put this uh, celestron or we can use meat. Meat one is a little bit I noticed is two more shows the prime, secondary mirror too much but the celestron one is all right and if you use antares that will be also all right. This focal reduced actually made the field of view wider so um, um, when I'm looking at the faint fuzzies, which are, you know, big, uh, I mean, can be up to two, three degrees in the case of the Andromeda galaxy. Uh, if you look at with a narrow field of view, you will not see the contrast between the darkness of the sky and the f brightness of the faint fuzzies. So this actually increased the field of view and I could see, discern them against the background of the sky and I think that was the secret for that this was really good get a, a focal reducer to use with uh, of course uh, you can remove this if you want to for planetary viewing you probably it's better to remove it or use a Barlow or a low magnification lens just to uh, see the more details that is visible in the case of the planetary objects like Jupiter and Saturn which are now in the sky and uh, for other things, for, for very wide objects like the faint fuzzies, nebula clusters and all the things, it's better to have the focal reducers. So we have a, almost two degrees here. This is a this is 10 millimeter. I had a 40 millimeter last night and this 40 millimeter. And with this uh, focal reducer, the widest possible field of view was around two, two degrees, which is really good for four. Uh, uh, moon widths you could see and that's the secret I think to using this comfortably with the uh, good amount of the visibility
What you can see there in the center is the Copernicus crater. To the right of it is the Kepler crater. And the dot, tiny dot, to the right of that Kepler, near the edge of the white area, where the down to it here, a little bit lower, is a black dot, that's Grimaldi. That tiny white dot is the uh, magnetic anomaly called uh, Rainer Gamma, or Rainer Gamma. As you can see, the thin layer of cloud is exists in the sky. It's moving. It's mist, practically. And, uh, yeah, the Italy-shaped uh, area to the top uh, is the Jura Mountains. And uh, and you can see a tiny dot also in that Jura Mountains called Plato, actually, Crater Plato, the philosopher. The bright dot to the two o'clock in this image. If you imagine the top part is twelve and the lower part is six. At two o'clock of the image, in the middle of the in in somewhere in the black patch, the white dot is Aristarchus, and the area around it is Aristarchus Plateau, the volcanic area.
because you're making it really dark. I want to test what it actually should be. And the circular feature, black circular feature at the top at 12 o'clock is, uh, is the big black circle uh, is the Mare uh, um, Imbrium Sea of the Rains and uh, to the lower part of it at seven o'clock of that circle what you can see is the mountains of the Apennine of the Apennine 